<coughs> so in the last lecture uh, we already covered what structures are uh, actually we did not cover an array of structures so we are actually going to cover array of structures in this class so what array of structures are okay basically a refresher for um, for the ones who forgot what structure is structure look like okay so this is the keyword for a big linear structure and this is the name let's say we build cards you know deck of cards uh, we were supposed to and then we have interface then we had shape of the card and what else did we have okay let me have a look we had color so this was the structure which we already defined so it, ju it just in order to create a an array of structures what we are going to do is you can look at the code which is written over here so i am going to show you the code for now let me remove this here and let's see so for a deck of 52 cards we already defined the structure which has uh, which has a face value a shape a color uh, all these are defined so in just in order to declare the structure what we are going to do so we are going to write the data type okay uh, and then we are going to define a variable of that same data type and then we are going to write the size of this array so this is actually the declaration of array of structures in order to initialize all these structures since all these uh, all the structures has three independent values so we have three values right shape a uh, uh, face shape and color okay so just in order to you know fill all the shape uh, face shape and color so face was is uh, two three okay until there was joker queen and king all right 11 12 13 and there was shape we defined codes for one two three four all right and color were two codes okay zero one two three okay zero and one black and red all right so all this was already defined in the previous class so here we have uh here we have the first data in the deck in the array of deck of struct type card which has a data one zero and zero one for the face zero for the shape and zero for the color and the second data we have here two zero and zero and similarly we can have as many data points as we want until it suffices the uh, size of the array 52 we can have 52 data points we can fill it up and initialize at the same point so this is declaration and initialization at the same point all right and in order to access the data what we are going to do we are going to access it using the indexing notation so deck at deck zero zeroth position we are accessing the face value and what is the face value here it is one so it will return one and the shape is zero so it will dot shape okay dot shape is zero so it will return zero as expected so we are done with array of structures now we are going to cover um and very important topic uh, to your concern which is pointers so what are pointers basically so let us move to the whiteboard and 
blackboard for your reference so what are pointers pointers are address variables okay there are some data uh, some data types which store you know uh, values some variables which uh, which store values such as integers uh, floats and uh, characters all these different types so pointer is a pointer is a variable that stores some data which is of type address address okay okay so let me define it correctly pointers are used for indirect access we are going to see what is indirect access in the later part of the video but for now let's just focus on what pointers are and what are the use cases of pointers so you can see the you know memory memory all right you already we already have seen a lot of examples from the memory so we are going to see one more main memory over here so this is the rough idea of the main memory so main memory has three parts right one is e one is stack frame so it has the main activation record so it will get filled here main and here is the code all right so what happens is uh program doesn't directly access you know in order to access this heap of memory we cannot always access this heap memory program cannot actually access this heap memory in order to access this heap memory we need pointers so say let's a pointer is defined here which is given some address let's say 100 so there is like an array let's say whose starting index is 100 ah uh, okay so there are three uh, the size of this array is three let's say a we have so this points to the first index of this array so in order to access this heap we can use the pointer we actually need the pointer there is no other way that we can access heap over here so this is one way that pointers can be used all right there is one uh, this was the one method it can it could have access heap so pointers can be used to access let's say there is a file in our hard drive and we give the address of the file and then we can access this file as well we can access some monitor let's say we can access a monitor we can access uh, you know hard disk hard disk as well this is i'm not very good at drawing but still you can access a lot of things using these pointers okay the program executes and divide the memories into three parts all right as i told you stack heap and code section the stack is where the activation record gets built up when we create the main program the activation record gets built up in this uh, stack frame and in order uh, this heap memory cannot be usually accessed by the program so in order to access this heap memory uh, we are supposed to use pointers so we are going to see um, the uses of pointers okay so let me add this for now and we are going to see uses of pointers the one as i told you accessing heap memory all right the second will be accessing the resources like monitor hard disk files and all of these and the third very important uh, thing that 
pointers are used in is parameter passing. We will study this. We'll get to know what parameter passing is when we cover functions. Okay. Parameter passing, very important. So ah, now that we are done with uh, all the theory part, let's get into the code and see how a pointer is declared and initialized and all the various operations that we can perform in the pointer. Okay, let's see pointers. Okay, so I have uh, coded out uh, some basic things uh, like a pointer declaration and initialization. Now we are going to see that. So this is a normal variable. Okay, let me. So this uh, this part which we have, this is a normal variable, which contains normal integer data. Normal variable. So this is how a pointer variable is initialized. Let me clear this and use a highlighter in that case. This is how a pointer is initialized. We used a operator star in order to initialize pointer. And in order to store the address inside this pointer P, we are going to use this operator. And, and this. All right. So what did we see till now? Initialization and declaration. This declaration, what does it do? It stores the address of A. So let's say the address of A is let's say um, 200, 200. And it stores the value 10, all right? And let's say it's two bytes, so it stores from 200 to 201. So what happens is inside P, we, we store the address of A. This uh, notation says that we can store the address of A. This means and A means address of A. So what is the address of A? 200, so 200 gets stored here and this points to here. All right, so for demonstration purposes, we are going to print values and see uh, what is going to happen. So here we have uh, the print of statements and we print out A. So it print out 10 and in print F, uh, if we do, if we do star P, we also get 10 because this is the dereferencing operator. What it does is it outputs the data at the address of P. Uh, I'm sorry, I deleted the diagram. I erased out the diagram, but just for you to get the picture, it has the 100, let's say 100. Okay, 100 and 101, A. So it points here. So what it does is it dereferences and prints out whatever the data at this address is present. This is the address which is present at P and what is the data at this address? 10. So it will output 10. D references. Data at the address of P. It will output. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to see how we can access the heap memory which we are all uh, talking about in the previous slide. So in order to access heap memory, we need, we need to use this uh, standard library function, stdlib.h. Uh, in C, actually. In C, we have the malloc function for dynamic memory allocation. And in C++, we use the new operator. So we are going to see how this works, OK? So uh, we have created a pointer. We have initialized a pointer, int star p. And in order to access the, let's say we are going to access size five, five uh, sized array out in the heap. Let's say, okay, it should be so. Let me get one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four. This is A 
and this is inside the heap heap memory this is the this is the heap and inside the stack frame uh, inside the main activation record we get this p pointer which points to the first address let's say this is 200 so it points to this it can access this so in order to you know access this we are going to you know dynamically allocate this memory in the pointer okay so this function what it does it returns a void pointer so in order to typecast this into an integer type we are going to you know use this int star so we can typecast into a, so that it returns integer type pointer and this five into size of int because the size of this array is five okay and all these uh, values here let's say 0 10 5 3 4 all these are of integer types so it will take some size so in order to evaluate the size of this integer in uh, other compiler there are other sizes some some say two bytes some say four bytes so in order to so for this to be compiler independent we are using the size of function so this size of function will output the size of the integer data type okay in, and just similarly in c++ in order to allocate heap memory we use new operator new and size of five integer type uh, we can use this to allocate heap memory in C++. Pretty easy uh, in C++ syntax. So now that we are done with uh, declaration and uh, everything about pointers, we are going to move towards a reference. And this is uh, referencing is only available in uh, C++. All right, referencing is only available in C++, not in C. only available in C++, not in C++, just a clear thing out. Okay, so what is a referencing? Referencing is actually an alias given to a variable. <clears throat> so it is a nickname that is given to a variable. Just in order to access uh, the same variable using a different name, we can use an alias, which is also known as a reference in C++. So what do we have here? We have a simple variable a which has a value 10. So let's create a variable a which has a value 10. Okay. So it, it, has, it should be two bytes. It has the address over here. And now what we do here is int and r equals a. So this thing is a reference variable okay so what it does it gives an alias to this variable we can also call this variable at the same uh, address uh, we can call it using r so if we increment r by one what do we get here is if we uh, if we output r uh, in c plus plus we use the c out functions to output something on the command line so we get what we get is 11 and if we output a we get 11 as well so it does not create a copy of a it is a itself okay this is what referencing does reference variables are really useful in parameter passing so this is why we have discussed it separately so now we are going to see pointer to a structure uh, which is also pretty important. So let's see that. So pointer to a structure, uh, what it does is, so we already discussed what a structure is. So this, this is the structure part of the program. And in order to create a pointer to a structure, we are going to use this. We are going to create a pointer of this type rectangle and we are going to put in the address of this object which we created of the structure okay so uh, in order to output the this is really important in order to output this uh, intermediate values inside this uh, 
pointer which is which it is pointing to we use this dot notation or this arrow notation in c++ so we dereference this p and then at that address whatever data of length is present we can replace it by 20 so what we already have here is we have created an object of this structure r which has the length equals 10 and breadth equals 5. So what we are doing here, we are replacing length with 20. So it gets updated and it becomes 20. And in the similar way, uh, and in the similar way, we can also use this thing, this notation. It is the same thing just in order to, uh, you know, uh, define the use of pointers to a structure, we are discussing this code. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, we won't. This is as same as r dot length or r dot breadth. Also, we can access like this. Okay, like this or p breadth. Okay, all right. we have done we are done with pointer to a structure now we are going to create an object dynamically in heap using pointers so how we are going to do that we are going to see it this will be closely related to whatever we have studied right now so let's see so we already have seen the structure so what we are doing here we are creating a pointer to a structure and then we are uh, substituting this pointer to a structure with a dynamic uh, we are giving dynamic memory access to this uh, pointer to a structure okay so what this code does is so this pointer p we have here c it will point to this r okay so rectangle the size of this pointer uh, will be irrespective of the size of this rectangle because this pointer is of previously was of integer type now since it is of struct rectangle type so it will be of let's say two two okay, four bytes all right so we are dynamically allocating memory from this uh, malloc function and using the size of this uh, structure rectangle, then we are adjusting. Um, we are replacing uh, the p dot length and p, p arrow breadth as 10 and 5. So length of 10 and 5. Okay. All right. So we are done with this. Now we are going to cover functions, which is really important. So let's get back to. What are functions? Functions are pieces of code that performs a specific task. So why do we need a function? Let's let's uh, see how programmers actually write programs all right so in an overview let's see how programming works so this is the main function you can you know write the code here itself write some functions here itself and then if we want not functions i mean modular this is not modular code and in, this is pretty huge in order to come if, if we are using something here we cannot reuse that we have to re-implement over here and this is a, has a huge code base and there are many disadvantages to it as well you know and in functional program uh, in uh, you know type of uh, programming where we use functions uh, so how, what would it look like let's say we have function one function one okay we have some code here we have function two we have another set of codes here. Uh, I'm 
Uh, we have we have what? We have the main function here. So we are calling these functions func one, func two, func three. No, not three. Let's say we are trying to recall the function one. So how can we do that? We can recall it. So this thing, this this thing, whole thing over here is very modular. As you can see, this whole thing is very modular. Because we can reuse this function. We don't have to write again and again some uh, things which is some logic which we used here. If we want to reuse it, you don't have to write this again and again. We can reuse this function itself. So it will uh, use the logic which is already declared in this function and not you know you don't have to write it again so this kind of programming is called monolithic programming programming all right and this is modular or you know procedural programming so functions are also called as modules or procedures. So hence the name modular or procedural programming. So it has many benefits. We'll discuss the benefits right now. It is modular or procedural programming. All right. So the benefits of using functions inside your program is so you know you can break all these tasks into multiple uh, you know sub sub tasks and you can give all these tasks to a team so you can you can build a project using a team you can say that uh, uh, one person a, the person a can do this person b can do this and the head can you know sum it up all up and implement inside the main function okay so you know uh, it is easy to develop because uh, many people can be used use this in, a, in in the same team okay so it is very modular as well you know the reusability is very high if you want to use this function again you can use it again with no issues okay this is very uh, easy and in this type of programming it is very hard to work uh, with people all right if one developer does it one developer has to do it alone has to finish this whole thing so it's very hard to develop as well so, so as an overview, uh, what a function is, it is a group of related instructions that perform a specific task. So let's say we have an add function over here. Okay, we'll look into the code uh, as well. So let's look at the code only. Okay. So here's the code of a function, uh, you know, example. So we are going to discuss very important things over here. So let's see what the things are. So we have a user defined function over here, which has a return type if of integer is as a name and, and these are the parameters of the function. So now these parameters are known to us as formal parameters which are defined at the declaration time of a function okay and we'll discuss about the different type of parameters later so let me explain this function what it does is it creates a local variable c that does an operation on these formal parameter formal parameters which just adds them a and b it just adds them and returns this addition in a form of c it stores it inside c and it returns c as well so now in the main function, we have created three variables, x, y, and z. So in x, we have stored 10, y, we have stored 5. And now what we are doing is we are invoking this function and we are inputting these x and y inside this function. So this x and y are what? These are called as actual parameters, which gets passed into a function and then when it gets passed into the function according to the value of these actual parameters this uh, function runs 
in accordance to this actual parameters so these actual parameters gets converted into formal parameters it executes and then output is returned to the uh, specific variable or whatever wanting we are wanting to print all right so this is also called as the invocation of the function this this uh, okay not this whole thing this just this invocation of the function or the function call so when we do this we get the output 15 which is 10 plus 5 x plus y it comes out as 15 so as we can see and if you want to see the memory uh, memory side of things we can also discuss that uh, let's just see what, what memory usage it does so let's say this is the main memory that we have sorry about the this is the heap this is the stack this is the main activation record this is the stack so this is the code snippet so we have the main function here okay sorry main function is below all right okay this is pretty big let me So we have the add function here. Add function. We have some code and then we have the main function. All right. So when this add function uh, gets declared, it has no, you know, memory. It does not take any memory. But then uh, when uh, it is called inside the main function, it gets its own activation record. So it gets this add here. So here we will have all all the all these formal parameters of this. Let me create a bigger space for all this. It's too small to write in. So here we have the main activation record, and let's let's say this upper portion is add activation record. So here what we have is now we have the formal parameters a and b. And what we are going to return is C. It also gets, uh, you know, it is a local variable that is inside the add activation, add functions activation record. In the main function, what we have is X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. In X, we have a value 10, and Y, we have the value 5, which comes from here. Okay. And in Z, what we are doing is we are calling the function. And inside uh, Z, uh, inside the, when we call the function, this X, uh, these uh, these actual parameter gets passed into these formal parameters. Okay, so the A becomes ten, and B becomes five, and C becomes the addition of these both two numbers, which becomes fifteen, and this is returned to Z. So Z becomes fifteen. All right, and then when this uh, the function of this uh, add add is done with the control comes to here then this activation record gets deleted this activation actually gets deleted and the main function remains okay so this is how it works in c++ all right so we also see we have seen internally how it works so it should give you a clearer picture okay so we are going to move ahead and then we are going to discuss parameter passing which is a very important topic all right we are going to see parameter passing so parameter passing uh, we have of three types okay so the three types of parameter passing the first two is available in c okay c and c plus plus both actually C++. So the third thing is only available in C++ as we did we have already discussed that reference is only available in C++. So first we are going to see call by value. So how the call by value thing works is uh, the thing with call by value. So we are going to define uh, this uh, program over here. I'm going to discuss this and uh, show you how this call by value works. We are going to define a user defined function swap which has two parameters, you know, we have two formal parameters, X and Y. 
so what it does is swaps these both numbers we we have created a temp variable inside this temp we you we replace it with x and then x with y and y with temp so what it does is it swaps the value of these two variables and inside the main function we have two variables a and b we have 10 and 20 when we swap this you know use it inside a swap what happens we will see now using memory we will we'll see this okay so what happens if we take a clearer picture in the memory we have always discussed there are three parts in the memory there is heap then there is stack stack frame and then there is codes code snippet so there is a swap method of code from there's main we have some code so what happens is this is the main activation record and as i told you when a function is called uh, the there is a separate activation record for a function okay this is swap and this is main activation record inside the swap we have x and y and temp yes these boxes for uh, the separate and then uh, and then in in the main function we have we have a and b okay we have a and b and we have the values inside them 10 and 20 okay so what happens when we call this swap function we call a and we pass it to this uh, swap function. We pass A into this and B into this. Okay. The actual parameters become formal parameters. It becomes 10 and 20. And what this does is uh, the X, bec uh, the temp stores X. Okay. And then X becomes Y. It becomes 20 and 20 becomes 10. Um, and the Y becomes so these are swapped internally but is there any change in the va uh, variables a and b there is no change they are not changed so what will be the output here 10 and 20 are they swapped no are they are not swapped so what did we learn here okay sorry about that we clear the screen first so the thing we learned is any change in formal parameters do not reflect any change in actual parameters when we are uh, doing call by value okay it just calls the value and then does not affect the actual parameter does not reflect in the actual parameters it's just something goes on inside the uh, you know formal parameter section okay sorry about the noise All these things happen inside the formal parameters, but there's no change in the actual parameter. So the second thing which we are going to see, we are going to modify the same code and make it call by address. We are going to see what is call by address. In order to do this call by address, what we are going to do is, let's see. There are some code changes which we are going to do is here. We are going to do this. We are going to dereference it. And then we are going to use it here as well. So this is. Um, so we need to also, you know, put in the on here, and this is probably done this is actually suitable this uh, call by address thing is suitable for modifying the actual parameter so what we are we are going to see here is the addresses of actual parameters are passed in the formal parameters and the formal parameters are pointer type we have to note that the formal parameter parameters have to be a pointer type so that any changes done in the function itself will uh, you know point out to the address and then the changes in the actual parameters can be done this is the logic behind the call by address thing 
you can see it very clearly because the name itself calls a lot of things you know call by address so how can we access the address using pointers all right we have discussed this so this is how it works so this is a pointer and this is also a pointer so we have defined it here in temp and then it uh, dereferences it to x why whatever we enter here it all always have, will point to the the actual parameter so let's just see uh using block diagrams i'll show you it more picture so this x and y are of pointer type okay in lb we have a has 10 value b has 20 value let's say a has 200 201 202 and so the this this value gets stored inside x okay so what what do what happens when we do this the swap and then we input the address of a address of a what is the address of a 200 200 gets stored here and since it's a pointer type it will point to a and then similarly it will point to y i mean b so whatever changes that we do here in temp, a temp becomes uh, whatever uh, data that we have at the address of x. What we have data we have at the address of x, 10. Then we uh, use it at temp. And then uh, we, whatever data that is at y, we replace it with here. And then whatever temp is there, we replace it with here. So whatever happens, happens to the actual parameters. So the output here will be 20 and 10. So this works. Okay. So should have given you a pretty clearer picture of what uh, call by address is. So now let's move on to call by reference. So call by reference is the last topic for today. So here we have call by reference. If you understand call by reference, I am going to undo the changes which I have done here. So, what we are going to do here is, as we have studied in reference, reference variables, or what does reference variable will do in the first case? The reference variable just creates an alias of this variable that, uh, you know, it is given to. So, what we can do here is, we can create a reference variable inside the parameter of the function and it will do the same thing you know i will change so give a little time and think what will it do so i will of course i will um, show you the memory side of thing but but then meanwhile you can uh, pause and ponder maybe so here's the heap here's the stack frame here's the code where we have the swap function and then we have the main method that we are calling the swap function and then this code gets here so what happens here is so Here, here is the main main activation record. So in this call by reference, there is, there does not get any you know uh, activation. No activation record gets uh, prepared in the stack frame for swap function. All of this happens in the main function itself. All the code from the swap function gets uh, replaced by the by the compiler uh, into the main function itself so it becomes something like monolithic programming only so this is why it is not advisable to use it every time but one two times you can use and fa fairly for simplistic programs obviously you can do and for complex programs with loops and all you cannot use this as end result yeah so we have um, what do we have here so we can read this code first. So inside the main function, we have a has a value 10, b it has a value 20. So when it gets passed in the swap, 
A and B. So what happens is, what happens is, this uh, and X equals A and Y equals B. So it gets alias. This reference alias gets alias gets alias for A, so it can be also replaced by X, also replaced by Y. So now when we do this, it actually affects the. What does it affect? Formal parameters or actual parameters? Actual parameters. It will affect the actual parameters, and these two will get swapped. This, uh, you know, temps will come into picture, and then you know everything will get swapped. Okay, so it will output twenty and ten. Okay, so the code and uh, the the thing which we have to note down here is the the only thing that happens in uh, Call by reference is only single activation record is created for the main function, and there is no activation record for the swap function, and uh, the code only gets copied as the function call. So it becomes like monolithic programming as I've said. So this is not advisable to do uh, on manipulating formal parameters. The actual ones gets changed in uh, call by reference is what you have to note it down. And in the next class, uh, preferably, we are going to see a further few basic concepts, and then we will wrap it up the basic concepts part. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Okay, sorry.